Can I just remind members that all business is follow-on, that while there are timings, they are estimated, and we do expect members to be here for the next item of business if they are involved in that item. The next item of business is Stage 3 Proceedings on the Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill. In dealing with the amendments, members should have the bill as amended at Stage 2, that is SP Bill 12A, the marshalled list and the groupings of amendments. The division bell will sound and proceedings will be suspended for around five minutes for the first division of the Stage 3. The period of voting for the first division will be 45 seconds. Thereafter, I will allow a voting period of one minute for the first division after a debate. Members who wish to speak in the debate on any group of amendments should press their request to speak buttons or enter RTS in the chat as soon as possible after I call the group. Members should now refer to the marshalled list of amendments. And we move to group one, exception for use of dogs below ground. I call amendment 19 in the name of Ariane Burgess, grouped with amendments as shown in the groupings. Ariane Burgess to move Amendment 19 and speak to all amendments in the group. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and please accept my apologies for being late for the start of this debate. The Rural Affairs Committee expressed its concerns about the use of even one dog underground, stating that it is not clear that the use of dogs at all below ground is compatible with the bill's pursuit of the highest possible animal welfare standards. My amendment 59 removes section 5, the exception to use a dog to hunt foxes below ground. I'd like to thank Colin Smith again for supporting this amendment and indeed all of my amendments. During the evidence process, the Rural Affairs Committee received evidence from the SSPCA on the consequences of sending dogs underground to flush foxes. Pictures showing dogs and foxes with horrific injuries and disfigured faces, and written evidence about wild animals screaming in terror and pain as they were torn apart by dogs. How is this compatible with the bill's pursuit of the highest standard of animal welfare? Sanctioning the use of a terrier below ground is sanctioning a core part, perhaps of the cruelest part, of fox hunting. Terrier work also continues to occur as a cruel standalone pastime for certain people and gangs who enjoy using their terriers to attack foxes and badgers. Dog fighting is illegal in Scotland. It should also be illegal to pit a dog against a fox underground. Removing Section 5 would also help to put a stop to illegal badger baiting by removing a common excuse for, from baiters that they were just trying to flush a fox. My amendments 19, 25, 28 and 31 are consequential from amendment 59. Coming on to other amendments in the group, I support Colin Smith's amendments 54, which stipulates that if a dog is used to flush a fox from below ground with the intention of killing it, then it must be killed by shooting it as soon as reasonably possible, not killed by a dog or another inhumane method. I do not support Rachel Hamilton's amendment 55, which adds to the list of purposes which would justify using dogs underground or her amendment 58 as it would allow the use of nets which could prevent the fox from emerging from below ground or even trap them to be used as bait for young terriers. I do support the Minister's amendment 5 through 8 which add conditions to the use of a dog below ground to reduce the impact on the welfare of both dogs and foxes. But, of course, I would prefer that we don't allow hunting below ground at all. So I move my amendment in this grouping. Thank you. Colin Smith to speak to Amendment 54 and other amendments in the group. Thank you, President Officer. Labour does not support the use of dogs below ground to control mammals in any circumstances. As has already been said, the Stage 1 report from the Rain Committee stated clearly it is not clear that the use of dogs at all below ground is compatible with the Bill's pursuit of the highest possible animal welfare. That is because it is not. The proposal in the Bill to limit the use of the number of dogs to one is an ineffective compromise. If it is cruel to use more than one dog below ground, it is cruel to use any. It is not credible to argue that you can properly control a dog once below ground. And the Government now admit this. 
and have changed the explanatory note to the bill to say that a person who is responsible for the dog as defined in section 26 no longer continuously needs to direct the dog's activity by physical contact or verbal or audio audible command. So Labour supports Arianna Burgess amendments 19, 25, 28, 31 and 59 which would remove this exception completely. The risk and harm caused by creating an encounter between a dog and a wild mammal in an enclosed spa space makes it clear that the section should be removed on animal welfare grounds. The amendment in my name in this group uh, only, become relevant, only becomes relevant in the event that section 5 is not successfully removed. Amendment 55 seeks to specify that the intention should be to kill any emerging animal by shooting, ensuring less humane methods are not used, that this scenario is not used as a cover story, and that the intention is not to kill wild mammals with dogs. Although E specifies the method of killing should the wild mammal emerge, this amendment would more explicitly require that there is no intention for the dog to kill the wild mammal. The wording of my amendment has been altered from stage two to clarify that the wild mammal should be shot as soon as reasonably possible, which is similar to the rest of the bill. Amendment five and six from the Minister to require a dog used below ground to, to be fitted with a tracking device, and amendment seven to require reasonable steps to be taken to avoid dogs being trapped beneath uh, ground uh, and to rescue them if they do get trapped, uh, will get the support of, of Labour. As I have already stated, our position is that we oppose the use of dogs below ground uh, altogether. However, these amendments would mitigate some of the risk to the welfare of the dogs, and in those circumstances, uh, they get our support. We support Amendment 8 from the Minister also to create a condition that a fox is not prevented from emerging below ground to mitigate one of the many risks posed to foxes by the activity permitted by Section 5, should this section remain. However, Amendment 58, in the name of Rachel Hamilton, which creates similar conditions to those in 5 to 8, would allow the use of nets to prevent the fox from emerging below ground, and we do not support this due to the welfare concerns it raises. I therefore urge members to support the amendments in my name, those from Arianna Burgess and those from the Minister in this group. Thank you. Rachel Hamilton to speak to Amendment 55 and other amendments in the group. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Amendment 55 in my name seeks to extend the ability to use dogs to hunt. Sorry. Pardon? Okay. Sorry, I don't know if somebody wants to interfere. No, I, I could hear another so sound too, Ms. Hamilton. Do continue. Okay. Amendment 55 in my name seeks to extend the ability to use dogs to hunt wild mammals below ground in order to preserve or protect species diversity of animal or plant life and eradicating invasive non-native species from certain areas. The purpose of being able to use a dog below ground is to enable fox control and effective wildlife management. Limit limiting the means to do so uh, and protect livestock alone ignores the reality that using dogs below ground for these purposes is a vital tool for protecting other wildlife such as vulnerable ground nesting birds. So far we have heard no reasonable explanation as to why the Scottish Government believes the use of dogs to control predators below ground is acceptable for the protection of livestock but not for the protection of dwindling populations of curlew or capercaillie. The importance of using dogs in these circumstances below ground is clearly outlined by Lord Bonamy and Lord Burns in the Bonamy Review. Bonamy said that the material presented to the review is persuasive of the need for the use of terriers to ensure the dispatch of fox gone to ground and there is no firm scientific evidence of the extent of the impact of the fox. Indeed, it was observed in the Burns report that the banning of hunting could have an adverse effect on the welfare of foxes in upland areas unless dogs could be used at least to flush foxes from cover. The 2002 Act that this bill has been brought to Parliament to replace rightly allows for this form of predator control. I would ask the Minister if she believes that it is appropriate at a time when ecologists are discussing the extinction of capercaillie in Scotland to remove a vital means of protecting these birds from predators if she believes that it is important to support my amendments. The omittance of this exception by way of a vote against Amendment 55 could well be the nail in the coffin for the capercaillie but a vote for it would be a proactive step in ensuring we do not erode the toolkit of countryside custodians in effectively managing our wildlife. Amendment 58 aims to outline measures that should be taken for the welfare of dogs being used below ground. Whilst this bill seeks to address issues the Scottish Government have identified in the 2002 Act relating to welfare of animals being hunted, it is also 
provides an opportunity to introduce me measures to safeguard the welfare of dogs being de deployed in these activities, particularly of the circumstances in using dogs below ground. By requiring the use of locating equipment and making it clear that unless netting, nothing should be done to prevent the animal from leaving the place below ground, this amendment would protect a, a dog's wel welfare and ensure best practice. Um, on the other amendments in this group, uh, the Conservatives will not be supporting Ariane Burgess' amendments and Colin Smith's amendment, but are minded to support uh, the amendments from uh, the Minister in this group. Thank you. Thank you. I call the Minister to speak to Amendment 5 and other amendments in the group. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'll begin with Amendments 19, 25, 28, 31 and 59 in the name of Ariane Burgess, which seek to remove Section 5, uh, the provision for dogs below ground, from the Bill. Um, I'd say from the outset that in developing the Bill, I've sought, and my officials and I have sought, to pursue, on one hand, the highest possible welfare provisions, but whilst balancing that against the need for farmers, for land managers, for environmental groups to carry out legitimate wildlife management in our rural nation. I know that the use of dogs below ground is a very polarising issue. Uh, I understand, therefore, why Ariane Burgess has brought these amendments, because I too have heard the evidence about the use of dogs below ground and how that can pose a risk to both the welfare of the dog and the wild mammal. And I have sought to respond to that in many ways. Uh, it's why this bill purports to change the law so that no more than one dog can be used below ground, and that's in line with comments from Lord Bonamy. It's why we're placing strict limits on the purposes for which a dog can now be sent below ground. It's why at stage two I supported amendments to remove mink, thereby again narrowing uh, the situations in which dogs could be used below ground. And it's why I've lodged amendments five, six, seven and eight today, which had those further uh, uh, provisions on the face of the bill about ensuring best practice and welfare. Um, but I want provisions on this to be drawn as narrowly as possible. However, on the other hand, from the work that, that my officials and colleagues and I have undertaken in developing the bill, it hasn't been clear that there is a viable alternative when it comes purely to fox control. Uh, no more humane methods have been put to me that would fulfil the same function. In fact, uh, something that has preyed on my mind significantly is that it has been put to me that some less humane methods may be used in absence of the opportunity to put a dog underground, which included blocking up a den, uh, resulting in starvation, which I think is something everybody would want to avoid. Um, therefore, after giving uh, a great deal of thought to this matter, I'm unable to support uh, Ariane Burgess's amendments, which would remove this provision. Uh, moving to Colin Smith's Amendment 54, uh, this amendment requires a person using Section 5 to intend to kill the wild mammal by shooting as soon as reasonably possible. And I appreciate that Colin Smith has changed a, a similar Stage 2 amendment to, remove, or to seek to remove the issue of inconsistent language. However, this amendment does still uh, present a legislative anomaly. Firstly, because intention is very difficult to prove. Uh, it opens up a subjectivity which was problematic in the former Act and which we must try and avoid. Um, but moreover, there's a practical problem because it's possible that a person searches for a wild mammal below ground, uh, but that mammal doesn't emerge, so the person cannot shoot it. The person may have intended to do so, as per Colin Smith's amendment, but that won't always materialise or happen in practice, so it would be wrong to have legislative provision which didn't acknowledge that. In any case, Section 5.3d of the Bill, as currently drafted, states that if the fox is found or emerges from below ground, it must be shot dead or killed by a bird of prey as soon as reasonably practical. And I think that that provides much of what I suspect Colin Smith is seeking to do, but it does it in a, in a realistic way that takes account of changing circumstances. And for those reasons, I, I can't support Colin Smith's amendment. Um, Moving to Rachel Hamilton's Amendment 55, uh, expanding the number of purposes for which a dog can be used below ground to include uh, provisions for environmental benefit. Uh, as I said in the context of Ariane Burgess's amendments, I have considered this issue very carefully, sought to strike a careful balance. Um, and because of this, just as I couldn't support Ariane Burgess's uh, amendments to remove Section 5 completely, nor can I support Rachel Hamilton's to amendment which would extend the purposes 
for which dogs can be used underground. I, I have not heard any evidence on allowing the use of dogs below ground for the purposes listed in the environmental benefit section. And I listened to what Rachel Hamilton said. I do not think that the section she quoted from Lord Bonamy's report was necessarily evidence of this. Um, Moreover, the 2002 Act, that Act which of course we are seeking to update and improve, it does not allow the use of dogs below ground for the purposes that Rachel Hamilton would suggest. So if I were to accept this, I would be going even further than the 2002 Act provided, uh, which I do not wish to do. So I cannot support those amendments. Uh, coming to mine, numbers 5, 6, 7 and 8, I referred to these earlier. They seek to bolster and to make very clear on the face of the bill the welfare provisions which must apply to the use of any dog underground. Uh, they provide that anyone using a dog to search or flush a fox from below ground must, as well as complying with all other conditions, take reasonable steps to prevent the dog from becoming trapped, fit the dog with a suitable tracking device and not take any steps to prevent the dog from being flushed or emerging from uh, below ground. And again, this is about the recognition and my desire to uh, draw these as narrowly as possible and to ensure the welfare of the animals in so far as possible. And uh, finally, uh, Rachel Hamilton's Amendment 58 it really seeks to address many of the same issues as my Amendments 5, 6, 7 and 8. Um, these are similar precisely because uh, I agreed with Rachel Hamilton's Stage 2 Amendment and confirmed that I would bring something back at Stage 3 which addressed it. Um, they are similar, but I would ask Parliament to support the wording of mine, uh, which is more precise and consistent with the rest of the bill. For example, my amendment refers to, quote, a device to allow tracking of the position of the dog below ground, rather than in Rachel Hamilton's, which uh, refers to suitable electronic locating equipment, which is clearly uh, subjective. They are very similar. Mine is more precise, and I should be grateful if, if Parliament would support that. Thank you. Thank you. I call Edward Mountain. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And before I start talking about any amendments, I'd like to remind the Parliament that I have an interest in that I own and manage land and have been involved in wildlife management for over 40 years. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the Minister for listening uh, to some of the debates. I know that she has struggled in some of these to find a solution to some of the problems she feels as a matter of conscience. However, I find her amendments refreshing because they take into account what is, after all, good practice and practiced on the land by most people that are using dogs underground. I'm disappointed with Ariane Burgess's amendment because she seems to seek to defend it by suggesting that it will stop dog fighting and badger baiting. There is never, ever an excuse for dog fighting, and there is never, ever an excuse for badger baiting. Badger bait, badgers are one of the most protected animals in the United Kingdom, and the offences for interfering or causing injury to badgers are probably some of the most stringent uh, offences that you can be charged with. Therefore, I don't find those arguments compelling and any reason to stop the use of dogs underground. Those people that work in the countryside know that when a fox gets a taste for lambs, it becomes a very difficult animal to control. Often, I think, as we heard during the uh, committee debate uh, from Mr. Fairley, that uh, it was older foxes with less teeth who became more susceptible to predating on lambs. And when you've seen a few lambs with their back passages eaten out, tongues chewed out, or the soft underbelly ripped apart when they're still alive, you'll know why foxes need to be controlled. Therefore, controlling them underground by using dogs to flush them from under the ground to be shot is, is entirely appropriate and in necessary across the farming community. Now, Colin Smith's amendment, I don't believe, is one that needs supporting because I think that, as the Minister has made the point, is what people are attempting to do when they flush a fox from underground. They are there to try and shoot and kill it. I would support both Rachel Hamilton's amendments because I see them as good practice. Presiding officer, I, I am concerned that if members decide to support Ariane Burge's Section 5 amendment, we are making a problem for ourselves which will prevent us not only looking after domestic livestock, but looking after the flora and fauna of Scotland. Thank you. Thank you. I call Finlay Carson. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Um, I, I rise in support of the amendments brought forward by Rachel Hamilton. And I appreciate 
that the Minister does acknowledge the, the need for using dogs underground, and her amendment on that matter would improve the bill slightly on that front. However, Rachel Hamilton's amendments are based fundamentally on stakeholder engagement with the SCA, BASC and the Kennel Club, whereas the, the Minister seems to be based on what her government thinks is best. So, could I ask that the Minister reflect on who is better to place to decide on these improvements uh, rather than upon welfare concerns for dogs? Is the member taking an intervention? I know. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to add, uh, yeah. I call Ariane Burgess to wind up and press or withdraw Amendment 19. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I fully un understand and sympathise with farmers' need to protect their livestock and crops. Removing Section 5 won't prevent farmers from doing this. It just means that they have to use another method which is less likely to result in agony and injuries for the dog and any wild animals involved. The Rural Affairs Committee has expressed its concern about using even one dog underground in its report, as have several other animal welfare organisations and the government's own animal, Scottish Animal Welfare Commission. It's clear this exception should be removed from the bill. The Minister has stated her concerns that removing this exception for foxes could lead to an increase in other cruel practices. But we shouldn't shy away from outlawing cruel practices for fear of other cruel practices being adopted. The mentality shouldn't be, what's the least worst? We should turn that on its head and actively seek better. Coming to Rachel Hamilton's point on the need to protect Caper Cayley, Rain Committee heard from RSPB, the Scottish Society for Protection of Birds, that we have limited evidence that fox and crow control benefits Caper Cayley. RSPB explore all non-lethal options before moving to lethal control and always bring in trained marksmen to conduct fox control on their land. They do not use dogs to control foxes. And in response to Edward Mountain, if badgers are so well protected, then why does the Scottish Badgers advocate, advocate removing exceptions to the use of dogs below ground? Thank you. And I press the amendment. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 19 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division. And as this is the first division of the stage, I will suspend for around five minutes to allow members to access the digital voting system.